Hello, my name is Dr. Andrea Teague, and I am Vice President of Cancer Services for Christus, and I am a medical oncologist at the Christus St. Vincent Regional Cancer Center. I'm here today to talk about breast cancer screening. So first of all, I would like to do a dedication. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And this is an annual campaign to raise awareness about the impact of breast cancer in our community. Working hard to prevent, detect, and treat breast cancer is an important way to honor those who have battled breast cancer in the past, including those who are no longer with us. First, I want to talk a little bit about breast cancer statistics and why screening is so important in our community. So breast cancer is the most common cancer in women and is the most common cancer-related deaths in women worldwide. Most breast cancers are detected by screening and screening studies are using mammograms, ultrasound, or MRI of the breast to find a cancer. We screen for breast cancers because finding it early is the most important factor in determining whether or not we can cure this in women. The earlier we find a breast cancer, the higher the chance that we can cure this and it never causes a problem again for a woman. Since we started aggressively screening in the last 30 years, there has been a significant decrease in the number of women dying from breast cancer. And that is all due to the fact that we are finding it earlier when we are better able to treat it and to cure it. Why we screen for breast cancer is because it is so common in women. And in the United States, it is estimated that one in eight women will develop breast cancer in their lifetime. In 85% of women, there is no family history or personal history of breast cancer. But the good news is with early detection, 93% of women are now still alive after five years from their diagnosis. So we screen because staging is very important. The earlier we can find a cancer or the earlier the stage is, the better we are at treating it. So what is staging? So staging is the process that we use as oncologists or cancer doctors to find out whether the cancer has spread within the breast or to other parts of the body. The most important parts of staging are the size of the tumor in the breast, if it has spread to the regional lymph nodes in the armpit, or if it has spread beyond there to other parts of the body. We also use something called a grading system, and this is used to describe how quickly a breast tumor is likely to grow and spread. And we also use biomarker testing um, to find out whether a breast cancer cells have certain receptors on this. So the earlier we can stage a patient, the earlier the stage of the patient, the better chance we have to treat and cure. And this is where screening mammography or a screening mammogram comes into play. So how do we decide who gets screened for breast cancer? Obviously we don't screen every woman and there are guidelines that can help determine who we decide needs one. So we screen for breast cancer in women who have had family members with a history of breast cancer, who have a certain gene mutation that we know can increase the risk of developing breast cancer, and we screen for breast cancer in women of a certain age. We know that as women age, their risk for breast cancer increases over time. We occasionally also do mammograms for men who have a certain family history of breast cancers or in family members who also have one of these gene mutations. So there are many organizations that help make recommendations and guidance for screening mammograms, and I've listed three here. Each of these organizations have slightly different recommendations, so we will go through those individually. First of all, I want to say that these screening guidelines are made for average risk patients. There are women who are at higher risk of developing breast cancer, so we will talk about those guidelines in a little bit. So women who are average risk are women who do not have a personal history of breast cancer, so they have never been diagnosed before. They do not have a strong family history. Now, given that breast cancer is very common and that one in eight women get it, some women do have a family history. A strong family history usually implies that there are many women either in the same generation or over multiple generations that have developed breast cancer. 
An average risk woman does not have a known genetic mutation, such as a mutation in the BRCA gene, as these do increase the risk of breast cancer. And the average risk woman does not have a lifetime risk of greater than 20% of developing breast cancer. There are online tools that can help you or your clinician determine what your lifetime risk is. Two such models are called Klaus or Tyra Cusick, and these can be found online very easily. So the first guideline I'm gonna talk about is from the American Cancer Society. Again, these guidelines are for women who are at average risk of developing breast cancer. So the American Cancer Society recommends that women start to consider annual mammograms starting at the age of 40. Their recommendation is to start annual screening mammograms, certainly by the age of 45, and to continue that until age 54. They do recommend that at age 55 that you can consider continuing on with your annual mammograms, or you could consider doing a mammogram every other year. All women should understand what to expect when getting a mammogram for breast cancer screening and what the test can and cannot do. There are limitations to what a mammogram can do in terms of detection of very small tumors, but in general it is the best screening tool that we have for finding an early stage breast cancer. The second guideline comes from the National Cancer Care Network, and these guidelines again are for average risk women. These guidelines recommend that all women actually start annual mammograms at the age of 40 and continue that until age 75 or even consider longer if a woman is still very healthy and expected to live for many more years. They also recommend an annual clinical encounter, and that means going to see your physician and having a clinical breast exam done by a professional healthcare provider to look for any abnormalities on the breast that they may see or feel. They also recommend something called breast awareness, which we'll talk about next. So breast awareness really means doing self-breast exams. So it is important to have a breast exam with a healthcare provider once a year, but doing breast self-exams at home is also an option. Now, when we've looked back at the data, we have never seen that doing this has decreased the chance of dying from a breast cancer, but a woman is often the first person to notice a change in her breast, and I have had many women in my clinic who said, I felt something, and that's what prompted them to get another mammogram, because it was in between the times where they get their annual mammograms. So I do think it is something that is very important to consider. So breast awareness means being familiar with your own breasts. Breasts often feel a little lumpy bumpy, and so women often say that they don't know what they're looking for or what they should be feeling for. And really what the important part of being aware of your breasts is to know what they normally feel like. Even if you're not sure, what often happens is women can notice a change in that over time. And that's the most important thing about doing regular breast exams. The final recommendation for breast cancer screening comes from the United States Preventative Services Task Force. And they recommend actually not starting mammograms until age 50, and they recommend women do it every two years. They do have a caveat to this, and so for women aged 40 to 49, they do recommend talking about the risks and benefits of having a mammogram starting at age 40. The reason their guidelines vary a little bit is that they know that the highest risk of developing breast cancer is between the ages of 50 and 74, and so they're the most likely group to develop breast cancers. However, younger women still are able able to develop breast cancer, so that is why they recommend talking to your healthcare provider starting at the age of 40. The reason they don't make a strong recommendation to start 
breast cancer screening at the age of 40 is there can be an increased risk of false positives. And that means there's an increased risk of seeing something on a mammogram that looks suspicious, but then when uh, further imaging is done or a biopsy is performed, uh, there is not any cancer there and it is just a benign um, area of the breast, meaning um, it was normal tissue. Women who are younger have more dense breasts and that's what leads to the increased rate of false positive tests in that age group between age 40 and 49. How do we generally screen for breast cancer in the average risk woman? So the standard screening study is a mammogram. What is a mammogram? A screening mammogram uses x-rays to take pictures of the breast to see the tissue inside. Previously, a screening mammogram typically involved taking x-rays, images of each breast, uh, one from the top and one from the side. More recently, we're actually using digital mammograms, and so that's still the two-dimensional views of the breast, along with something called 3D imaging, or digital breast tomosynthesis. We know that combining these modalities increases the risk of cancer detection and reduces that false positive rate that we saw with only the 2D screening mammograms previously. So I get a question for women who have never had one before, do mammograms hurt? X-rays themselves do not hurt, but to get a really good picture of the breast, the radiation technologist will compress the breasts so they can get a good picture of the tissue inside. So there is some discomfort during that process, but that discomfort is relieved as soon as the mammogram is over. Are there risks to mammograms is another common question that I get. So some women are concerned about the risk of radiation associated with getting an annual mammogram. The risk is felt to be very low, especially in exchange for the benefits of an earlier cancer detection and diagnosis. So to put the dose of radiation in perspective, people in the United States are normally exposed to an average amount of radiation just due to the natural surroundings, and this is called background radiation. The dose of radiation used for a screening mammogram of both breasts is about the same amount of radiation a woman would get from her natural surroundings over about seven weeks. So as you can see, the dose of radiation is very small just compared to what we get in our natural environment. Again, I talked about when a woman should get a mammogram and that the guidelines vary. What is consistent between those guidelines is that starting at age 50, every woman should get a screening mammogram, and that can be every year or every two years. And again, it's a conversation to have with your healthcare provider if you want to start at an earlier age, as many guidelines recommend starting at age 40. If you think that applies to you, again, talk to your medical team about it. If you think you're at high risk, I also strongly recommend talking to your healthcare provider to see if earlier screening, even before the age of 40, or if you need to be screened with other things other than mammograms. If something is seen on a mammogram that is unclear, there are many options that then happen. One is to do additional views of the breast to see if they can see something. Another option is to just repeat a mammogram in a shorter amount of time. And then finally, the other option is to use an ultrasound or MRI to see if there is something more suspicious there. We talked about kind of average risk women, so let's talk a little bit about women that may be at increased risk of developing breast cancer and what types of screening they should receive. Many women are at higher risk for developing breast cancers and there are certain factors that put them at higher risk. So one that we briefly talked about before is an overall estimated lifetime risk of greater than 20% based on models that have been created. Another consideration is if a woman has a known gene mutation, such as BRCA, but there's an actual whole list of other genes that we have learned about that increase your risk for breast cancer. 
If there is a very strong family history of breast cancer, when there is a first degree relative, such as a parent, a sibling who has a known gene mutation, such as BRCA1 or BRCA2, and you yourself had not had genetic testing, that is still considered a higher risk for that person, and so they should consider more intense screening. And then finally, some women have required radiation treatment in the past, usually for another type of cancer, such as lymphoma, and that sometimes involves radiation to the chest. That does put women at increased risk of developing breast cancers in that scenario. So I have talked a little bit about doing breast MRIs and ultrasounds. In general, these are not recommended for average risk women. But some women may benefit from a screening breast MRI in addition to mammograms. So that would be for the high risk women that we just kind of talked about. But women who aren't at high risk but have really dense breast tissues can also consider additional screening with a breast MRI. The presence of dense breast tissue, which is much more common in younger women, does decrease the sensitivity of a mammogram in being able to detect really small cancers. The dense breast tissue just may obscure the radiologist's ability to see a very small mass in a breast. About half of all women of screening age do have dense breast tissue, and this is usually reported on your mammogram report if you have dense breasts or not. The presence of dense tissue is not abnormal, and it does change over time. As women age, and especially as they become postmenopausal, uh, the density of the breast usually decreases over time. There is some evidence that using ultrasound, so that is a way of looking for cancer in the breast that doesn't require any radiation, can be useful in the detection of breast cancer. However, as a screening tool alone, it is not recommended. Sometimes it's used in combination with the screening mammograms in women with dense breast tissue or if there is an abnormality seen on the mammogram, often they will use ultrasound to see if there is truly a mass there or not. So you may see that this is sometimes recommended uh, following a screening mammogram, but it is not standard practice. Will insurance pay for screening mammograms? And the answer is yes. Because getting a annual mammogram is appropriate for women age 40 or over, insurance will pay for an annual screening mammogram. If your healthcare practitioner does determine you to be at higher risk, then that documentation alone will also allow you to get screening mammograms earlier if it is medically necessary. Many people do not have insurance, and so there are organizations in New Mexico that can help with getting screening mammograms paid for. And this is really important because no woman who needs a mammogram in New Mexico should go without one. So there are a few organizations that I've listed here that can help you obtain a mammogram if you do not have any insurance. One is the Breast and Cervical Early Detection Information Line. The next one is the Anita Salas Memorial Fund. And finally, Christus St. Vincent Medical Center has ways to help pay for screening mammograms and you just need to call the care coordination team and they can help you through that process. A very common question that I often get is, it is great to screen for breast cancers and find them early, but is there a way I can actually prevent it from happening in the first place? And there are some things that have been shown to help prevent it, but unfortunately nothing is a guarantee. One of the best things that women can do is to get and stay at a healthy weight. We know that women who are overweight or obese do have an increased risk of developing certain types of breast cancer over their lifetime. Part of getting and staying a healthy weight is also being physically active. We know that this is certainly important. 
Avoiding or at least limiting alcohol is also a key area of trying to prevent breast cancer. It has shown that alcohol can increase the risk of breast cancer and even drinking small amounts has been linked with an increase in risk. The best advice is to not drink any alcohol at all, but for women who do drink, the recommendation is to have no more than one drink a day. A drink is considered 12 ounces of beer, five ounces of wine, or 1.5 ounces of a hard liquor. I also get a question about what is the link between diet and vitamins and breast cancer risk. There is a possible link, but it's not entirely clear of what type of diet or vitamins may decrease the risk of developing breast cancer. It remains an active area of study. Some, but not all studies have suggested that a diet high in fruits, vegetables, calcium rich dairy products, and low in processed foods and red meats might help reduce the risk of breast cancer. And this type of diet has also been shown to possibly reduce the risk of other types of cancers as well. So far, there's no strong evidence about vitamins or any other types of supplement in reducing the risk of breast cancer. Some other factors that can reduce the risk of breast cancer in women include breastfeeding. Women who breastfeed their infants reduce the risk of developing breast cancer later on in life. And one key factor too is avoiding hormone replacement therapy. Previously, many women who are postmenopausal to ease the symptoms took hormone therapy such as estrogen, but we have learned that this does increase the risk of breast cancer. So there is a strong recommendation to avoid hormonal types of treatment for menopausal symptoms. So where can I learn more? I have put some resources on this slide that offers high quality, trusted information. The Komen Foundation has been in play for many, many years, educating women and involved in cancer and cancer research. The American Cancer Society is always a great resource for breast cancer or any other type of cancers. And the National Cancer Care Network has excellent information on breast cancer screening, and I've listed that link here. So thank you very much for your time. Please remember to get your annual screening mammogram if you are eligible for it. Again, this is the best way to try to find a cancer early and to cure it. So please contact your healthcare provider if you have any questions or concerns regarding breast cancer screening. Thank you.